for whatever reason, accommodation planes, especially the number 55, get a lot of hate from hand tool users. They say they're too complicated to use. So we're going to be putting blade number 102 in here. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this set up. One of the key things that you're going to want to do if you're employing your number 55 is you're going to want to make sure that everything is loose before you start making adjustments. So I've got both of my fences, all four screws loose. And then for my main body right here, these two screws, and then for my skate, I'm going to loosen those by having everything loose. Most of the time, you know, you're not going to have anything binding on the rods. And I think that's one of the sources of frustration is when people go to make adjustments, they find that things don't move on the rods the way that they want them to. And then that leads to frustration. So loosen everything. And what I've done is I've taken off the right fence because I'm not going to need it for this particular application. And now I'm ready to go ahead and put my iron in. There's really nothing overly complicated about putting the iron in. You're going to set it in. You're going to lock the opening right there onto that little nib. I'm calling it a nib. That's probably not the right name. And then I'm just going to get this wing nut finger tight for now. And keep in mind, I've still got everything loose at this time. I have not started tightening anything down yet. And I'm going to go ahead and main body right here. I'm going to get just that finger tight. That's it. I'm not tightening it down. I'm not cranking down on it. And then if you can see down in there, I'll turn it over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set my fence. This is my left fence. And I'm going to set it just outboard, just to the outside of that blade right there. And same thing. I'm going to go ahead and get that. Just finger tight for now. And when you're turning this thing, you know, upside down, right side up, you got to think your way through lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. And the last thing to get lined up is going to be my center skate. So I'm going to set my center skate right there to the outside. You can see it moving right there, right? So I'm going to set it right to the outside of that blade. That's blade number 102. So what I've got is I've got my main body is supporting this side of the blade and my moving center skate is supporting this side of the blade. And that's really what the number 55 is all about when it comes to combination planes because the blade is set where one side is lower than the other and that's the beauty of the number 55 is that my center skate can move up and down so it can move left to right it can also move up and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my skate so that it lines up with one side of that blade and it's going to provide the proper support but it's also going to allow that blade to travel down into the wood as I'm cutting my profile. So I'm going to have main body supporting this side and then my center skate adjusted to support the other. And I still need to set the depth on the blade, but you get the idea there for how that thing is going to be set. And then, as I mentioned, I've got my fence set just to the outside of that one. And then this right here is my micro adjust. So if you're familiar with the number 45, same concept. You can loosen this screw right here. You can make fine adjustments on this fence using your micro adjust and then you just tighten down that set screw right there and that'll keep that fence from moving i went ahead and set this thing off camera because it's kind of a pain to hold this thing at just the right angle and adjust everything at the same time i'm sure you'll understand but if you look right down there i've got just a little bit of the blade exposed because it's like any hand plane that you're working with you're going to want to take small thin shavings especially when you're first starting out and then also what I did is I set this fence a little bit further out than what I'm going to want it. And that's going to allow me to make that fine adjustment with my micro adjust. So I can move this fence in, but since it's set all the way out right now, I can only move it in. I can't move it back out any further. So I backed it out on purpose. And then one thing that I didn't mention on the center skate, when you're moving that up and down, 
you do have to loosen these two nuts right here so you're going to loosen those up which allows you to turn this screw right here which is going to move that center skate up and down and then once you're done you're going to tighten these back up and then that'll keep that from moving and then these two are going to be for setting that thing in place and not letting it move right now everything is just finger tight i've got a little bit of lean out like that and i'm okay with that this fence does have the capability to move you can loosen these two right here and you can actually set this fence you can you know set it to a different angle if you'd like i'm fine with it leaning out a little bit i think that's actually going to be better for my profile and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually set again using my micro adjust as i alluded to earlier and i'm going to set that thing right where i want it and then i'm going to go ahead and tighten this set screw down there's pretty much two different ways two different you know techniques that i've seen that folks like to use some folks like to start on this end and then make your first cut and what that does is it gives the blade the path of travel so that it has somewhere to go so it knows where to go and then other folks will start at the back of the board and then work their way forward it's going to be your personal preference so you're going to have to figure out you know try it both ways and see which one's going to work for you i like to start on this far end and establish my path to travel for my blade so it knows where i want it to go and then keep in mind just like on the 45 your main mission with your left hand is to hold even pressure against this fence right here it's a perfect hold right here as opposed to the 45 that has a stupid knob up top but it's got this you know nice grip right here on the side so you can really put some pressure against that fence and i'm just gonna slowly take it and i start on the far end and work my way back this is my preferred technique you do have to deal with your plane getting fouled like that i shouldn't say fouled you do have to deal with the shavings you know building up there but you just periodically you're going to clean those out and it's really not a big deal now what i'm doing is i'm not going all the way to the end because i'm trying to get an even cut as i go here these are all things that you're going to learn as you go here's an example of that getting fouled I do like to keep my screwdriver handy the one that came with the plane works out pretty good because i can just jab that right in there and push any of those shavings out of there when they start building up once you've got your profile set and your blade is working its way down in there then you can go ahead and actually get to cranking on this thing get to moving keeping in mind that you got to stop periodically and get those shavings out of there just kind of part of the deal and remember this is just a test piece but on the actual board, I need a 44 and three quarters board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it at 48 because if I'm gonna have a blowout of some kind, if I'm gonna have an issue, it's probably gonna be at one end or the other. It's probably not gonna be in the middle. So I'm gonna cut it long on purpose. And then after I've cut my profile, then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna cut it down to, to length. And I have the option to cut from either end or both ends if i need to and that is the test run right there now well y'all can see that but i look at this as one of those where if i can do it anybody can do it there's really nothing too incredibly difficult 
I do have this set a little bit different than I did. I'm actually trying to match this profile with an existing shelf and I have this set so I'm going to do another test run but that's the beauty of you know doing this on a piece of scrap first is I can just run this over the table saw and just knock this off and then start over or for that matter I could just use a hand plane a bench plane and just knock all that down it'd take a little bit longer because of the angled profile but it could be done and then I can just do it again and and if you watch my other video the combination plane challenge I talked about you know, putting in your reps, and that is pretty important. That's how you're going to get proficient. That's how you got proficient with your bench planes. Same thing with your combination planes. Shout out to my buddy Meds for sharpening the iron for me because I mean the two laser don't have time or a combination of both. I made a little fine adjustment with my fence to bring that in just a little bit. Same concept. I'm going nice and slow, taking my time, establishing that path to travel. And you can definitely see that groove that's forming right there and that's the beauty of this number 102 this is going to cut that outside groove first and that actually helps the blade stay on track oh, I got a little blowout right there I don't know how well you can see that 